Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back with another video from Seth. He's churning them out, and we've got Saitama versus Gojo. Now we've got two huge powerhouses here from two very interesting universes. So let's see who got this. I don't Honestly, know. Honestly, the intro. You know who these guys are. Yeah. Strong anime guys. Let's just get into it. If you think Saitama is I have no idea who to uh, that say from the get-go here. In fiction, he would win the fight. Thank you uh -huh. for watching. Cut. Subscribe. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love it. Are they gone? Okay. First okay. things first. Saitama is undeniably stronger than Gojo. Compared mm -hmm. to the power of Gojo, Saitama may as well be an Eldritch powerhouse that can literally. Yeah, but it's what Gojo can do with these. Uh... In One Punch Man's manga, chapters 159 through 166, we see Saitama I think based means, on I can't the name of it. The martial artist named Garo. Garo. As they fight, Saitama and Garo's fist clashing have such destructive energy that other top-tier characters like the number one hero Blast, Blast and many other dimensional fighters have to actually teleport the energy away yep. or else the entire Earth will be annihilated. That's in mental. Doing so, Absolutely stars insane. <laughs> from reality far off in the cosmos. During this battle, our One Punch Man gets so absurdly overpowered sneezes and accidentally almost blows up Jupiter. As a reminder, Jupiter is a gas giant with a mass, according to the universe today, of over 318 oh, times that of Earth. He also grabs one of Jupiter's many moons and flips it so hard, it just People literally <laughs> destroys it. Even attacks earlier when Saitama is much weaker can easily annihilate and dissipate energy beams that are going to obliterate the Earth with possibly enough energy to destroy his stars. His trunk off the serious approach. <laughs> the One Punch Man compass and maybe some naming fallacies. On the other hand, Gojo does all in comparison. The greatest feats in Jujutsu Kaisen for the most part tend to be considered the creation of domains. Domains, yeah, that's the word I was thinking of. When Dagon creates a tropical island with an unknown amount of water around it, with others such as Joko creating earthquakes and meteors that could damage cities, etc. The most high bold interpretation is if you consider this action mark here in the Jujutsu Kaisen manga in Dagon's domain that we mentioned earlier mm -hmm. to be a star and say Dagon had enough energy to create a star in his domain. However, this is clearly just an action highlight with the light source of his domain being unknown. Even if you were highly charitable and granted it to them, <laughs> I'm a charitable the thing on this. interpretation of Saitama would also utterly annihilate anyway. With many thinking Saitama even not being charitable could destroy multiple solar systems to even galaxies as shown literally on screen. Let alone Jesus. Yeah. an island Numbers. <laughs> a giant light bulb. I mean, star. Excuse me. say Gojo scales above Hikari's jackpot, which gives him infinite cursed energy, you can interpret this in many different ways, with there being arguably more statements and translations of Saitama having limitless or infinite power than mm -hmm. Jujutsu Kaisen said maybe Gojo having a technique actually just literally called limitless and infinite whatever the Hakari <laughs> situation could just sort of be similar to the Andrews from Dragon Ball mm. where they have infinite key and energy but it more so converts into stamina as in they can spam their abilities endlessly with yeah they don't they don't get tired yeah creating infinite we understand you can just keep attacks, going in the tournament yeah very great. But anyway Saisama is a lot stronger than Gojo but yeah. as we all know and as I went over in great detail and Kakashi versus Gojo, which I recommend. Great video, great video. Gojo is not about physical strength and cross versus battles. The real battle is what Gojo can do with his energy and his techniques against this absolute power. His beautiful, of beautiful eyes. <laughs> the the main map, three <laughs> abilities Gojo has that will be even up for discussion, considering the sheer power gap here, are one, his jujitsu technique, limitless, or his curse technique, and two, hollow purple, which is sort of an extension of that limitless mm -hmm. technique, and three, his domain expansion, unlimited, unlimited void. In every discussion of Gojo versus another character, one of the main reasons everyone immediately assumes Gojo is so overwhelmingly OP is due to the limitless curse yeah, technique. I can't touch him, Most yeah. discussions go from, could he be Gojo, to could he even touch could Gojo? Touch him, yeah. In my last Gojo video, Gojo versus Kakashi, I gave a huge breakdown of Limitless featuring a large yeah. article from Jogo it was a lot it was a lot where Shonen Jump themselves got a bunch of mathematicians and the JJK editor to break down how 
how JJK and Gojo's abilities work. It's math. It's actually math. I love that they did that, but it's just math. Well, I'm not going to get the same full breakdown for the sake of turn on viewers. To sum it up, Gojo uses mathematics to create diverging numbers. He uses a lot of mathematics. He's an opponent given a distance and brings a universal concept known as infinity in between any two distances he desires, or at least up to a certain point. This makes it so that even a seemingly finite distance could have infinite points that some would have to traverse, which is brought up as Zeno's paradox. It would also function by rearranging points or numbers within a distance to make the distance ultimately different. Basically, he creates a space between he and his opponent that slows them and eventually stops them from mm -hmm. ever reaching his body. So, yeah, what? Well, Tyson Zero, a character named Miguel, explains red as a property of limitless, or an extension of it, which is Gojo's ability to manipulate cursed energy on an atomic level to manipulate space. With the sub the movie yeah. of his actions and manipulates its space time on an atomic level. This would also apply to purple, as purple is the combination of his red and blue curse techniques. Purple is described as creating a negative equation or hollow equation that basically creates an impossibility that removes whatever it touches. If purple works using limitless, which is heavily implied, then it too would do this on an atomic to space time level, depending on what you would use. Now, the movie does say space time, however, it's one thing detail is that it also still says on an atomic level. Yeah. <laughs> so take that as you mm -hmm. Meaning if Saitama doesn't have resistance to at least atomic level attacks or attacks that affect space time, it may erase it. This is why when I brought it up as ultimately something that may matter, as Saitama is the type to honestly just stand and tank attacks from opponents he thinks are weak very often. Now he doesn't always do this, no. but you have to admit it's very in character for him to do yeah, it. Does have quite often, yeah. physical strength is not impressing Saitama in any no. It is a good possibility. Saitama may try to punch it away or just tank it like he does many other things. So could he survive things? Or attack him on an atomic level, interesting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Love it. Easily, yeah. Even characters like Atomic Samurai, a very oh, yeah, of course. Course. hero within one punch man slash so clean and cuts on an atomic level. level. <laughs> of course. And atomic Samurai course. couldn't do a thing to Monster Garo and the webcomic who not even joking, catches his atomic slash oh. with two fingers and snaps the blade in half. The guidebooks then go into detail about atomic samurai being That's actually quite interesting. That's cool, isn't it? Could he inspire an atomic level attack? Yes, there's a guy that attacks in the manga, universe. I guess this scene is in the manga, which is a bit different than the webcomic, but the webcomic doesn't really have a whole lot of information about it in guide form. So I'd say it's pretty reasonable to assume that is the intent of Atomic Samurai. One further thing that the guy says is that he's called Atomic Samurai literally due to his ability to attack with nuclear level strength and to slash. <laughs> well, there you go. Level. Yes, that answers so the question. That's the sure. whole point of his name. It would probably apply to the webcomic and Saitama as well. Saitama, even before getting serious, could handle Monster Garo pretty casually. So, yeah, an attack that works on an atomic level, I doubt, is enough to just ignore his durability and just instantly kill him or something. This would only be for base normal Saitama as well, as he actually gets stronger as many of you are aware of in his fight against Cosmic Fear Garo, mm -hmm. and in a few redraws of the One Punch Man manga. In his fight against Cosmic Fear Garo, he is able to pretty much kick away Garo's hyperspace portals, which are him literally just ripping open space and making portals in it via hyperspace, which is a space of more than three dimensions on Google. If you believe that time is the fourth dimension in question here, then he is manipulating more than obviously space-time, but if you believe it's talking about physical dimensions, then Garo may be opening up a level of reality Gojo couldn't even comprehend. Yeah, like how's he gonna like, <laughs> understand what's going on? Kicks them away. Uh, Garo also <laughs> that he really can't do anything to Saitama at a certain point, and doesn't even consider opening up, say, a portal on Saitama's body like a Kakashi combo he has a wind con or anything that is possible after seeing him just kick one away. Saitama in the One Punch Man manga redraws is also introduced to a character named Phoenix Man who is facing a high level hero named Child Emperor. But the twist to this is they were fighting in another dimension, more specifically a spiritual dimension or an alternate space. Saitama just sort of punches into it. Yeah. I don't know. Not only that, but he could actually hear them while they were inside of another dimension, somehow. Uh, it Crazy. Was different. Later yeah. on, we see Saitama with some coaching from Garo, learn how to rewind the very particles that make up time in the universe to rewind time. So I'm 
going to be straight up 100% honest. Saitama probably could just stand there and tank. Take him. everything that Gojo he takes and throws at him. Yeah. Space time feats or higher. But Gojo compared to Saitama in power is just non existent on top of that. Gojo would be lucky if Saitama doesn't blink so hard, Hollow Purple just flies back into the <laughs> Blink so, so hard. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Saitama being able to punch away space and all that, or even interact with it. A pretty interesting ability of his. In the anime, Geryugenshu, a general of main antagonist named Boros, hopefully I didn't butcher that dumb octopus's name, is able to manipulate gravity so hard he thinks light has trouble escaping from it. Even One Punch Man's artist, Murata, thinks that he can throw things around at near light speed with his powers as well. Black holes, while too strong for Boros' general to fully replicate, do in fact warp space and time. In fact, most forms of gravity do. Even if this octopus was sort of mimicking its power and making it a very extensive form of gravitational manipulation, Saitama just stands in its force and doesn't even feel it remotely. This is backed up by Saitama later taking attacks compared to gamma ray explosions, which are the biggest form of explosions in the universe, let alone a pseudo black hole or minor space orbit. But what I was really getting into with that was if Saitama can interact with space time, mm -hmm. right? And Limitless more than likely just works on an atomic level. What if Saitama just sort of punched Limitless away? Yeah, I know that huh. sounds crazy, but I actually made a little example of you guys to show what I might what he might actually be able to do, unironically. You have to remember atoms or things on an atomic scale so are still cool. sitting atop space time. If you can manipulate actual space or space time, you can quite literally just bend the fabric that atoms sit upon and negate limitless. So now while if limitless is not, of course, manipulating actual space time fully, uh, rather than just on an atomic level, which is hinted at more in the manga. Now, while there are some very, very concrete proofs that Saitama can probably tank Hollow Purple, mm -hmm. unless you think it is some conceptual level negative erasure god technique, and some decent proof Saitama could probably easily deal with Limitless, even if you think for some reason he couldn't punch through Limitless, he could still actually get through it. As you know, Saitama at the end of the fight with Garo can reverse causality. Uh, yeah. So if we're pitting a maxed out Saitama against it's, Gojo, it's, it's he would know so... how to do this. Unfathomable all the stuff that Saitama can do in this. With his fist already in Gojo's face, on a level Gojo couldn't even comprehend, as the attack would be coming from the literal future, mm. and isn't even a punch, just him appearing on to Gojo, that. thus sort of just ignoring Limitless and the space between them. But that's a very plug your controller of Saitama's ass sort of situation that he may or may not ever even. I think it would just be kind of way funnier and more in character for him to just throw Limitless away yeah. or something. Just my taste, though. And yes, I'm aware, Limitless is, of course, something that Gojo is constantly generating. But if it was to be negated or punched through, Gojo would then have to reactivate it. And of course, Saitama is probably a lot faster than Gojo, which will be Hell easy. yes. The final win con, though, Gojo's number three, Unlimited Void. This is where things can get quite sketchy. If it ever gets to this point, bloodlust in Saitama would blitz and annihilate Gojo before this technique was yeah. ever launched, to be quite Boss. honest. As you guys may know, many characters in One Punch Man can launch things at speeds faster than light, with Saitama straight up being able to zip around a moon in its almost entirety so fast that an explosion happening on it appears to not even move while he does it, which many have calculated to be much faster than the speed of light. Even characters Saitama flicked a rock at and killed with no expression could apparently throw things at him at near light speed, and he could catch those rocks easily. With Boros being able to kick Saitama so hard, he hit the moon at light speed as well. Sort of similar, Saitama also jumps back from said moon at pretty much a similar speed or instantaneously. In Jujutsu Kaisen, characters, top tier characters by the way, hype up things like Mach 3. Bruh. That's right, Mach 3. <laughs> and things like the speed of lightning are borderline unavoidable. My god. <laughs> yeah, the speed on both is just so hard oh, no. though. time and moving in it as levels of infinite speed but as we outlined earlier this may be questionable as gojo's curse technique and aura may manipulate space and time already which may allow him to move even then if saitama reverse causality he is guaranteed to hit gojo 
and one-shot him. Also, if you really want to wank Gojo's speed to inaccessible or infinite, you could easily probably wank Saitama to immeasurable, which means he can yeah. just freely move through time. But if Gojo hits the Unlimited Void, if, what would happen? The Unlimited Void is different as it is a mental attack, and in the Jump Special, domain expansions are explained as setting the coordinates of your opponent and it appearing on them no matter what. <laughs> so, Saitama can't really just dodge it either, because it would just appear wherever his coordinates were. Normally, I'd say he could just break out or punch out of it, but once it hits you, you are already being hit with its effects, which are infinite levels of information being shoved into your brain repeatedly. Right. Yeah. Infinite levels of information <laughs> are injected into your brain on the spot, and you can't move while it happens. Saitama, from what we know of, has no known mental resistances. Mm -hmm. I'm sure in the One Punch Man manga, eventually, he probably will get some, but from what we know, he's never really been shown fighting it too much. Yeah, it's all physical. Fighting, say, strong psychics or breaking into Phoenix space, a mental feat. But the only other thing, really, is Saitama possibly imagining a universe within himself at the end of Garo, but even then, it's really questionable what that means, or if it's even an infinite universe. And even then, if it was an infinite universe, he imagined Gojo would still injected with more information not joking maybe you might be able to argue that saitama has the ability to ignore information such as <laughs> yeah talk play dumb just passes through okay. his head like, comedically <laughs> but that seems a little bit disingenuous yeah. hey maybe this ability would probably not joking fry saitama's noggin based on the information we know although i doubt in actuality it would whether the level of information would kill him or not is more debatable but it could probably stop his movements if at least briefly if there's anything you guys think that saitama has that could negate unlimited void let me know but otherwise unlimited void isn't just infinite information it's sort of multiple sets of infinite information everything in the universe repeated infinite times every letter and everything every sound literally everything unlimited void it's sort of an absurdly broken ability that very few shonen characters honestly could ever hope of having a weirdly abstract resistance to for a character to have a resistance to it, it has to be very very specific uh to the story so i'm not surprised that one punch man we haven't seen something like that written because it's just so weird right in yeah conclusion though gojo would be lucky if he ever even got to launch yeah simon's got it I, yeah yeah so. with as saitama is just much faster and if bloodlusted straight up just punch through limitless and kill gojo straight away one punch wow i'm fine yeah fair <laughs> brilliant boop, boop, boop. i like the intro have they got have they got okay <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Brilliant, yeah, Saitama has definitely got that. The Limitless Void thing, yeah, but I don't think he'd get to use it. Like, And the speed feat as well, like, oh, he's, he's, he's just as fast as lightning, and then it's like, okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Oh, that was a bonus. Anyway, thank you to my patrons. If you want to have your name at the end of every video I upload, link in the description of the patron page. One dollar a month is all that helps support the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much for that. Thank you all for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe, and leave comments down below. Let me know if I should watch this in future videos. I'll see you guys, you guys. Next time.